Hello, my friends. My name is Ian Vare, and you're watching The Green Mountain Chef. I have a lovely surprise for you in the studio today. Stay tuned. Today, I'm going to be bringing to you a recipe that I've been making for many years. Some of my customers would tell me that it's my soon-to-be most famous recipe. It's a soup. We're getting into the colder season now, colder months. Soups seem sensible. What I like about soups is you can utilize all different types of ingredients, many of which I source at our local farmer's market. Ingredients like onions, carrots, green beans, tomatoes. You could put potatoes in it. You could put any kind of other greens or, or garlic or really whatever you want. Any protein if you like. Maybe you want to put fish in it. Maybe you find, have a nice beef vendor that you're friends with and you'd like to use some of his braised beef. I will be supplying you with the recipe on the website, but just remember, most importantly, what you take from today and this lesson in the kitchen, methods. Okay, I'll be presenting you with a few ratios. We'll talk safety, of course. Let's have fun. Okay, so how, how about we get started? I guess first I should thank um, my, uh, my friends, my fellows, and uh, the folks that support me at the local farmers markets. Uh, Saturdays in downtown Rutland and Sundays in downtown Dorset. Thank you so much for, in a sense, sponsoring me. And it is my pleasure to use your food and to hopefully support what we all are trying to do with our local sustainable community. And with that, let's get started. OK, so the key to a good soup, a wonderful stew, wonderful, wonderful soup, is a stock. What is a stock? It's a flavorful liquid that you create with, you start with water. You put some herbs and spices. You put vegetables, celery, carrots, onion, garlic, traditionally. You can also put in chicken bones if you want a chicken stock. Maybe beef bones or even shrimp shells. Maybe you'd like a shrimp stock. Today it's going to be vegan. Um, no animal proteins in the stock. So this is a base vegan stock recipe foundation. Now I'm going to be finishing this recipe with some local beef chorizo. Yum. I had it. I figured, what the heck? It was at market. It was one of those things I could get and bring right along. So th that's going to be a, an ingredient that you can use or decide to use something different or alternative. So the stock is going to reduce. We start with 12 cups. I already have it at a boil. 12 cups of water, okay? which I'm going to want to ultimately reduce down, like I said, to about a half a gallon. Okay? It's up on high. First thing I'm going to do, traditionally, I'm going to add in one bay leaf. You could even use a half a bay leaf, not very much. Boom. For a half a gallon, I'm going to use, I like it a little more peppery, so I'm going to use about a teaspoon of black peppercorns. Fun. Now I have other herbs that are going to go into this, but for the stock, those are traditionally the two, okay? Now, what else do we have? Well, the French call it mirepoix. That's just a fancy word. It's celery, carrots, and onions. Now the ratio here, this is important, per gallon of stock, and we have a half a gallon today, one pound of mirepoix. Broken down ratio-wise, half of that, 50%, is onion, okay? So that's eight ounces of onion. 25 and 25% 25 is going to be carrots and celery. So this is about a one pound, no, I'm lying to you. This is about an eight to 10 ounce onion, okay? About an eight to 10 ounce onion. So what I've done is I've taken the top off, pulled the skin off, and I want to dice this. I'm going to give it surface area. I don't just want to dunk an onion in there and, and let it go. I really want to juice it and get all the yumminess out of that. So what I'm going to do, after I've taken the top side off, leaving the root side intact, I'm going to cut it in half. So half of this I'm going to reserve for the actual stew, uh, soup. Half of that I'm going to reserve for the actual soup. Now, this is a 
Fun little technique, and we don't have to do this if we don't want, but this is something we learned in culinary school. Keeping our fingers on top of the oven and the knife very flat, very conscious of that blade. We don't want to cut all the way through, folks. Okay, you see that? Mostly. If I have a larger onion, I might do a couple slices. Now I'm going to go back over the top, not quite cutting all the way through. All right. Now, nice and easy, always keeping your thumb behind your fingers, out of the way so we don't cut ourselves. And you just cut right along the top. Now, this last few pieces, no big deal. We got a couple pieces that are oblong, no big deal. Okay. This is going to go it, one of two things. Could go straight into the stock. I'm going to make it a little more fun. I'm going to brown it a bit. Just a little bit of, I'm using canola oil today, good healthy oil. A lot of traditional French chefs will use butter, clarified butter. Um, I use it some, but I really prefer to use high monounsaturated fats. So this is hot pan. I don't want to burn these folks. I don't like the taste of burned. I don't think you do either. I want to caramelize them. I'm going to be very active with the onions in the pan. Okay? Watch your heat. Now this is high heat and this is um, a saute essentially what I'm doing right now which is high heat with just a little bit of fat. Now if I start to cry I apologize. These onions are... Whew. Try to breathe through the mouth not the nose. <laughs> okay. So they're probably going to take another minute or so. Meanwhile, I'm using, so I've used a half of a medium onion, we'll say. I'm using two stalks of local organic celery. I'm going to take off the very bottom, very bottom white. If there's any, uh, any leaf going on up in here, I usually take that off. Supposedly, it's a little bitter. Now, nothing fancy here. Just a quick stir. Nothing fancy. I'm just going to cut, watch your fingers, straight down the middle, two times. Oh, that one went a little to the side. We'll give it another cut. Check this out. Line it all up. Always keep that thumb back, folks. Your fingers are really just more of a guide, and your thumb keeps things balanced, but keep that out of the way. All right? Now these aren't quite as pretty as uh, when I put it in the actual soup, but for the stock I tend to go a little faster and it's a little bit more of a rough cut. Okay, our onions are beginning to brown. My heat is all the way up. We see some of the caramelization in there, folks. You could caramelize it a bit more than that without having any burn flavor, but in the essence of time, remember I only have 30 minutes uh, to get all this done. I'm going to go ahead and get this in our stock. And same deal with the celery. Exactly the same deal. Hot pan. Little bit of fat. Canola oil today. I probably put in about a half of a teaspoon. Not much, you guys. Right in the hot pan. Same concept with the celery. Okay, now, got a couple carrots while this is browning, and it is on high, all the way up. I'm going to do the same thing with my carrots. I'm not worried about taking the, uh, these are organic carrots, so I, I'm not worried about taking the skin off of them to make them look a little bit pretty, prettier, a little more presentable, I should say, in the soup, I'm going to end up um, peeling those, but I'm not worried about this one. This is just for flavor. Okay, so I'm going to take the very top off. The thinner, lower part of the, uh, of, uh, the carrot here, I'm just going to slice. Now, as it gets a little thicker up top, I'm going to cut these in half and then even cut them a little bit more long ways. All right, same kind of deal. Guiding with your fingers, keeping your thumb behind. All right. So, time-wise, how long is this going to take start to finish? 
probably an hour and a half. What am I going to do? I only have 20 more minutes. Um, so I have some shortcuts. Okay. Now this is on-air shortcuts that uh, are going to speed me up. So you can take this recipe at home and make it at your leisure. You don't have to be behind the eight ball like I am at the moment. So I'm beginning to caramelize here my celery. I'd like to caramelize it a bit more. Right? I'd like to, a little bit more. But in the essence of time, I'm going to keep going. Now, like I said in the beginning, you don't need to do this. But it does give it a little bit more flavor, which is kind of fun. So carrots, I could go through the same process, but I'm going to give myself an extra three minutes and put this right in the stock. Okay? So we're going to pretend. We're going to pretend that these carrots are caramelized. All right. Now, meanwhile, I've already made a stock. You know, I get here to the studio a few minutes early and get a few things ready for myself. So, when we're ready to use it, I already have a stock that I've strained. It's already simmered for an hour. It's on the back burner. So, what I've just showed you with, with this little stock here is, um, it's just a, uh, let's get started. One more thing that, that I, I neglected, and this is, it's not a must. It's an only if you like. And uh, we have some people here at the studio that don't like garlic. And there's some people at home that don't like garlic. So the last thing, but it's not like the spec, um, to saute a little garlic, put that in the stock as well, which is actually what I did with my original stock. So yes or no, this is up to you. Celery, carrots, onions, bay leaf, peppercorns, water. We're making a half a gallon worth of stock for a recipe today. OK, so maybe I'll bump into you uh, folks on the street one of these days, and you'll have a question for me about soup. Uh, feel free to ask me about that. So I'm going to keep going here. Stocks are done. Now, primary thickening agent for my soup. It's called a roux. And a roux is, def is defined by 50-50 by weight, actually, um, both fat and flour. Traditionally, clarified butter. Clarified butter has had all the, the milk solids removed. Usually you heat it up and you let it cool down and it pours off the milk solids. But today I am again using canola oil. And I frequently use avocado or canola oil, healthy fat. So for this quantity of soup, half a gallon, it's, the ratio is 8 to 1. Okay, So if I'm half a gallon is four pounds, so to be eight to one, I need a half a pound of roux, all right? So I have have myself four ounces of fat, four ounces of flour. Now there's a catch with that. With gumbo, your roux needs to be cooked. And the longer it cooks, the less it sort of um, thickens. The less it's going to thicken, the more it cooks, okay? So I'm adding a little extra flour today. All right. I already weighed and measured this out. Half a cup, came out just right. Half a cup of uh, canola oil into the pan. Now I have some recipes where I don't even cook the roux. I have others where I lightly cook it. And this one specifically, you have to cook it. Otherwise it's not a gumbo. So. I'm actually putting in, by weight, five ounces of flour. And this is a gluten-free, all-purpose flour. Frequently, I'll use brown rice flour or oat flour. And I, I like to use gluten-free options. So it um, doesn't alter the recipe at all. Might as well use something like that. So what's going to happen with this is it's going to cook. Now remember, folks, I didn't use exactly 50-50 by weight flour and, and fat because I wanted it to be a little thicker. I wanted it to have a little more thickening power because that's going to be dampened as I cook it. Okay, so remember that. Gumbo. Dark roux. Okay. Now, I have this on high heat. I wouldn't be cooking this and then the phone ring and then go grab the phone and talk with my buddy for a minute or go water the plants or anything. I have to be on top of this because I, I want to brown it heavily. And it's going to take on almost like a burnt popcorn kind of smell. Almost. It's yummy. But not, we all know what burnt food tastes like. We don't want it to be gross. OK? So nice and slow, constantly stirring, at least medium heat. I have it on high. I'm trying to go as quick as I can here. 
Now, here's what's going to happen. This can take about at least five to ten minutes. So we don't have time. The show will be over. So we're going to pretend like I'm doing this for at least another five minutes. Meanwhile, before we started, I made some, some dark roux. Just going to put this aside. Now, we can get a look at this here. It almost looks like dark chocolate syrup, okay? And the consistency should look like wet sand. What do you say uh, if well, I don't have a scale, or I don't know exactly you know, how thick my roux is supposed to look. It should look like wet sand. It should look like a, a chocolate sauce, all right? Fairly viscous, fairly thick, okay? Now, roux is best when you add cool, or at least room temperature roux, to boiling liquid, okay? So if I took that hot roux and put it in my, my, uh, my stock, it would go <laughs> You might get mad at Chef Ian. Uh, make sure you let it cool down, all right? Let it cool down. Boiling stock, room temperature roux, that's what I have here today. Making gumbo, so we have the black roux. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add this in. Let's make sure we're boiling. Almost. It's imperative that it is to a boil. Looks like we've got about a minute. So we'll fill some time up here. So I am a mushroom enthusiast. Uh, some locals would call me an expert. I do teach workshops. Uh, I spend a lot of time in the woods. I was going to make a whole alternate recipe for this show, but I was in the woods yesterday and discovered some of my favorite mushrooms, edible wild choice. I found lobster mushrooms, I found oyster mushrooms, I found chicken of the woods, which I've actually already worked with uh, in a few episodes ago. Um, they're lovely. Why not? Why not make a wild mushroom medley? Now, remember folks, something like this, you don't need to use wild mushrooms. You can get some lovely oyster mushrooms or other mushrooms that are cultivated at your local farmer's market. You can get them at the grocery store. You don't need to use them. It's much like this chorizo I'm going to be putting in. You don't need to use that either. So let me talk about these mushrooms for a minute, a minute here. The oysters, they're quite nice. They're uh, lovely aroma, fairly easy to identify. Check it out here. We've got a couple of them we can take a look at. I'm not sure how well we can see that. They have a nearly fully descending stalk, so the gills go almost completely down the whole stem. It's just about to the bottom. They grow on dead wood specifically, okay? Usually in, ro in clusters all over dead wood, and I think I'll be able to attach a picture uh, somewhere in here so you, we can all see what they look like in the wild. Um, let's see. Nice odor. The spore print was right. The spore print was, uh, was white, actually. Um, spore print, that's a method of uh, allowing the spores to drop so you can check the color to make sure that it is, in fact, usually a uh, usually able to uh, identify the species after a spore print, along with many other parameters that you've met. So oysters are nice. They're pretty easy. They're easy to cultivate. So this is a good one, uh, especially if you're not comfortable in the woods, you can get at the farmer's market, and it's delish. So oyster mushrooms. Another one was, uh, let's see, the chicken mushroom. I was surprised to find these. These generally come out in the spring, but they can be through, through the summer months. And this one, I found a big cluster of them. I left most of them. They're orange on the top. They're yellow on the bottom. They're polypore, many, many pores. Um, nice choice edible. They have the texture similar to cooked chicken. The lobster mushroom, they're interesting. They're actually a, a parasitic fungus that turns somewhat unpalatable mushrooms, say in the Rusula and Lactarius um, families specifically, into a choice edible. It's very, very interesting. So these are all mushrooms that you don't just want to say, oh, I saw it on the air, let me go get it in the woods, not that kind of thing. Uh, you know, I study National Audubon's uh, Field Guide to North American Mushrooms along with other manuals, and I have been for many, many years. So don't ever take any of this lightly when I'm using wild mushrooms, everyone. Safety's first, okay? So with that said, We'll come back to them, but let's go ahead. My stock is boiling. 
We've got our room temperature Rho. Now, here's the deal with Rho. You don't dump the whole thing in at once. You put about a quarter of it in at a time while mixing thoroughly and then you let it come back to a boil. Okay, it's coming back to a boil right in the center there. I'm going to put in another about 25%-ish, maybe a little bit more. Speed us up a little bit here. So we made the stock. We made the roux. Stock being not the flavorful liquid, the roux being the thickening agent, the flour and fat. Now we're making a French mother sauce called a velouté, and what it is is any thickened stock. And traditionally it is thickened with a roux. So hey, we, we just pulled off a French mother sauce today. It's pretty cool. All right, we're back to a boil. I'm going to add in the rest. Okay. Lovely. Now I'm going to add in about a quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper. All right. Salt to taste. I'm adding in a teaspoon. I'll taste it at the end. Oregano, just a pinch. Basil. I love basil. So let's go with about a teaspoon. I didn't use fresh herbs this week, folks, because uh, they were sold out at the market. They're popular, okay? Luckily, we have some dried herbs that we can use also. Um, this isn't a perfect recipe, but it's a good, consistent one. All right, so our velouté is going. I'm going to turn it down so it's just simmering now. Looks wonderful. And if I were to show you here, it should it should coat the back of your spoon quite nicely and not too thick, but just thick enough. One big deal with wild mushrooms is they need to get cooked, okay? Always. Hot pan. I'm just going to sort of rough chop these up. I want them to be very, very present. I don't want a small dice or anything. I want them to be very, very consciously in my soup here. Okay, let's uh, slice some of this chicken mushroom up. And I have some lobster mushrooms that I've already cut up into a hot pan. They soak up the oil pretty well, so you want to make sure that, that your pan's pretty good, almost to smoke point. And mine could have been a little bit hotter. Okay, our mushrooms are cooking. Our soup looks lovely. So I'm going to add in some celery, carrots, and onions. Okay, about two stalks of celery, which I've already diced up. About two medium carrots. The onions. Okay, so into my, my soup here. Some fresh garlic. This is good, fresh garlic, nice big cloves. You kind of got to smash it to open this up almost. Whew. Okay, that's how I do it. I literally lean right down on the garlic there. Okay, so my garlic, I'm just going to lightly dice up. I like to slice it first, and then I'll come back over and dice it a bit. All right, 
I'm actually going to sweat these just a little bit down in with my my mushrooms. Okay. Now they're going to cook for another 30 seconds. I'm going to put a bell pepper in. I got a nice looking bell pepper this week, so that was uh, something that I forgot to mention in the beginning there. Now I like to cut the top off first. Okay. Boom. And then the inside of it just sort of nicely comes right out. All the pith and all the peppers. Then you take the bottom, cut the bottom off, and then you can literally cut right inside to get all the rest of the pith. Now, Right in the soup. Mushrooms are going. Getting to be down to the wire. So when I costed this meal out, everyone, believe it or not, per serving, it was like four bucks. It's very inexpensive. Um, Calorie-wise, it came out per um, 12 ounces to like 600 calories, uh, about 40 grams of fat. It's a little high in fat, but it's all uh, monounsaturated, mostly monounsaturated, so that was good. Uh, protein, well, I'm about to put some chorizo in, so that ended up being around 20 grams per serving, and carbs around 40. Um, so fat and carbs are about the same. Could use a little more protein, but it depends on um, what you're trying to achieve. All right, so my mushrooms are gonna go in. My pepper's in there. I have some, uh, some waxy beans, some green string beans that I brought today. And in the essence of time, I got to keep rolling with these. But essentially what I did was I broke the top of it off and then I cut them into one inch segments. Meanwhile, I already have some prepped over here, so I'm going to keep on going with that. I have a tomato, Locally grown, peeled the skin, dipped it in boiling water for a minute, dipped it in cold water, peeled the skin, cut it in half, took all the seeds out, and then I diced it up, okay? This is one of the last things that's gonna go in. Because it really doesn't need to cook too much. You don't want it to be like tomato mush. Now, one of the most important things with gumbo is not just the dark roux, but it's a little ingredient called okra. And okra is not something that I'm able to get locally, but it's something that I was able to get at my grocers. So this is, doesn't have to be a requirement when you're making gumbo, but it should be. So if you're able to get the okra, get that going. So I'm putting this in towards the end. The okra is going to thicken it a little bit more as well. Okay. So I would generally let this cook, I would say at least a half of an hour, folks, maybe longer. And then Ideally, I would let it cool overnight and eat it the next day. So the last ingredient that I'm going to add into this is going to be my chorizo sausage. I've already boiled it for about 10 minutes. What I did was just score it right down, just scored it down lengthwise. And I'm just going to quick chop this up. Local beef chorizo is really nice. I had some for breakfast the other morning. Lovely. So all my ingredients are in my gumbo. Wild mushroom gumbo, local ingredients, healthy. We're just about out of time here, folks. We'll get you a plate in a minute here to show you what it looks like. Uh, I'll plate it up with some nice garnishment. Thank you so much for watching my program today. My name is Ian Vare, and you're watching The Green Mountain Chef. Thank you.